no degree. Uh, my knowledge of chimps was confined really to um, uh, Kohler, Wolfgang Kohler, who was a, a German psychologist, and he'd written a book called The Mentality of Apes. He was studying a community of chimps in Tenerife, in the Canary Islands. And actually, you know, although this tool use in the wild was such a big thing in the scientific community, so much so that, that I was actually accused of teaching the chimps <laughs> how to do it. It was assumed that all the stuff that was learned in captivity would be influenced by humans and that in the wild they wouldn't be so clever. It didn't surprise me that they used tools. It was exciting because I knew they weren't supposed to. I'd read Cola and I'd seen how amazing chimpanzees are and it was like, why, why would they be different in the wild? If anything, they might be thought to be more clever. Well, you know, when I got to Cambridge, I was told I'd done everything all wrong. And, uh, I, you know, that I couldn't, that animals couldn't, or I couldn't talk about animal personality, mind or feeling. I don't think, I don't think anybody believed it. I, I don't see how they can have. But um, at least when it comes to monkeys and chimps and dogs. But they didn't know how to prove it scientifically, so therefore it mustn't be talked about. It was wrong. So... And, you know, according to me, that was one of the most interesting parts of the whole thing. There was no way I was just going to push it under the carpet. <laughs> I'd had animals all my life. They all had names. Even the snails that we used to race, they had names. And so why on earth wouldn't I name the chimps? And anyway, how would I remember the numbers? I, mean, I, I don't like numbers. We'd be up to about 300 and something by now. What, what would that mean? looking back and saying this was 271, it wouldn't mean anything. Whereas a name, Spindle, yes, that brings the chimp to my mind. And I think most scientists now choose names, not all of them, but many of them, certainly those studying primates. And the empathy, uh, because we are biologically so like chimpanzees, so that we share 98.4 or 6 people vary, uh, percent of the DNA and the immune system and the structure of the blood and the brain is almost identical except ours is bigger. So therefore we have all this biology, biology in common and quite clearly a lot of the behaviour, the family structure, the tool using, the um, sharing, the gestures and postures, kissing, embracing, holding hands, patting on the back. So quite clearly we have a, a huge um, evolutionary We've travelled a long way together in evolutionary terms. And to have empathy, which means, you know, I think I know how this guy is feeling when he's behaving like that. If you deny that, and you just say, now I've got to be completely objective and write down what he's doing, and not even allow yourself to think, well, this maybe is why he's doing it, or how he's feeling. If you do that, then that gives you a that gives you a starting point to say, well, now let's find out if this is true and you know what questions to ask. It's completely not unscientific. 